Fantastic. All right, we can actually go to the to the next slide because what I want to talk to you about is a little bit about collaborative privacy and forest and then our new work plan. So for those who are completely unfamiliar with the Collaborative Partnership on Forest, it consists of 15 organizations that all have a major program related to forest. Most of them not only related to forest, also covering other activities. Many of them within the UN system or from the international conventions under the UN, but we also have a, a mix of NGO, NGO and government actually, IUCN, we have academia in here as well. We have uh, sort of the research organizations, both UFRO, we have World Health Forestry Center, C4, uh, and International Tropical Timber Organization, and a number of others. As you can see here, also including um, GEF, the Global Environment Facility, so also some funders. This was established back in 2001, formally established as a collaborative partnership uh, in support of the United Nations Forum on Forest. Next slide. So that's the first uh, core function of the Collaborative Partnership on Forest or CPF as we call it, is to, to support the work of the United Nations Forum on Forest and all of its member countries. The second main function is to provide scientific and technical advice to a number of different bodies. The third is to enhance coherence and cooperation, as well as policy and program coordination at all level among its member organizations. And we do that through joint programming, joint initiatives, and the submission of coordinated proposals to our governing bodies, such as COFO in our case, that's consistent within our mandate. So clearly we are working together with these 14 other partners on aspects that's already within our mandate and taking some of that uh, information and recommendations forward through our governing bodies. The aim is to promote the implementation of the United Nations Forest Instrument. It used to be called the Non-Legally Binding Forest Instrument. Now it's just the Forest Instrument. And the United Nations Strategic Plan for Forest, which was agreed in 2017, runs from 2017 to 2030. And of course, the contribution of forests and trees to the 2030 agenda and other major forest related agreements such as the four conventions that are within the Collaborative Partnership on Forest. Next, please. The Collaborative Partnership on Forest has prepared a strategic vision towards 2030 and also a work plan for 2021 to 2024. The strategic vision was prepared in 2019. It was adopted in January, 2020. And it says that by 2030, all types of forests and forest landscapes are sustainably managed. Their multiple values are fully recognized. The potential of forests and their goods and services is fully unlocked. And the global forest goals, the sustainable development goals and other global forest related goals, targets and commitments are achieved. That's quite an ambitious vision for 2030. And the members of the Collaborative Partnership are committed to enhance coherence and synergy among ourselves and to help countries move from deforestation to restoration. We have now, in uh, the follow up to this strategic vision, developed a work plan for 2021 to 2024 which we will be presenting to the United Nations Forum on Forest next week in order to support that realization of our vision and the mission, the mission being the commitment that you've seen here. Next. So we are working together in action through what we call joint initiatives. And there's a number of these touching on very many different aspects of work related to forests and trees. And I will go through all of those very briefly so that you get an idea, and then we can have a discussion about how we perhaps can support them even further or any other ideas that you might have for new joint initiatives 
uh, that we have. Not everything that we are doing with our partners in the collaborative partnership, of course, is part of an initiative. But we have some priority areas that we are working on with a lead or a co-lead for each of these and others that are supporting them in many ways, uh, both in kind and, and in contributions. So let's start by having a look at the first one of those. Next slide, please. This is one on streamlining global forest related reporting and logically FAO is leading that together with the UNFF Secretary. Area, uh, because they are also, of course, in support of the global forest goals uh, that are found under the UN Strategic Plan for Forest. And the aim of this is, of course, is to improve the coverage, quality, and transparency of data and information, and to streamline it so that we reduce the reporting burden on countries, so that they report in one place and we use that data for a lot of different types of reporting that they also have to do individually or is coming directly from FAO to some of the conventions, for example. At the moment, we will be in the next work plan in working to improve the methodology for reporting on primary forest. This is an area that has been an issue in, in the last global forest resources assessment. It's very difficult for countries to define and find a good way of measuring and reporting on their primary forest. We're also going to have a look at the terms and, and definitions for the next assessments, which is due in 2025, but obviously the data collection will start much earlier, and to re how to improve the reporting on that, and to advance what we call the global core set of forest-related indicators. There are so many indicators on how the forest are are doing and there's been an attempt to try and say well here is a core set where we know that this information is used for many different purposes let's concentrate on at least getting them right and there are a couple of those that we haven't gotten right yet where we simply have difficulties with finding the right measurement and how to the methodologies for how to uh, measure, um, report on it for example some of our socioeconomic indicators but you can hear much more about that next week because there'll be a presentation on the global core set by Ewald as part of the program for UNFF. Next slide, please. Another one that we are co-leading uh, is the Sustainable Wood for a Sustainable World, uh, co-led by FAO and ITTO with a number of other agencies and organizations involved to strengthen sustainable wood value chain and to advance responsible production consumption of legally and sustainably produced wood. And the plan is to put a global communication campaign to promote the use of sustainably produced wood. We had a great presentation by Thais not that long ago on sustainable wood for a sustainable world uh, with the team leaders and a number of units within the division that are involved. And I'm hoping that we would uh, have a revitalize perhaps the plan for how to go forward with this very exciting initiative. Next slide, please. Green finance for sustainable landscapes is another uh, of the joint initiatives where we are not in the lead. Um, this is by C4 and eCraft, Jeff and UNEP, to boost bank and investor interest to help increase the cap cap capital flows towards restoration towards deforestation free agriculture. They're hoping to increase commitments by financial institutions and a number of different Next slide, please. Forest landscape restoration is led by IUCN, uh, but clearly this is another area that we are very closely involved with. Uh, this is to try and mainstream forest landscape restoration into national, regional and international policy frameworks. They are supporting some specific pilot countries and hoping to generate new knowledge and to showcase the linkages between restoration and protected areas and with SC Sustainable Development Goals and to improve the implementation and financing at scale. As you know, we have a large program as well on forest and landscape restoration within the, the division. Next slide. 
there is a global forest expert panel that's led by UFRO. Um, this continues to, to, to take place from one work plan to the next. Uh, they do some specific analysis and assessment of on specific topics and produce a report on forest related issues, uh, particularly emerging issues. And the latest one that they did was on forest trees and the eradication of poverty that came out late last year. And they have also done some in the past on forest and water and on illegal logging and related timber trade. And you can find a list of all of them on the uh, CPF website. Next, please. There's also a communicators network um, with a number of different partners involved to help facilitate actions to increase forest related communication impact. They are amplifying the outreach activities of members of the CPF on events and also helping to coordinate strategic communication. And they advise on the common themes for the International Day of Forest. So you would have seen on this, this year's International Day of Forest, we had a fantastic media outreach. Much of that came from FAO, but much of it also came through our partners uh, as part of this communicators network. They've also come up with ideas for the theme for the International Day of Forest next year and for 2023. One is on sustainable production and consumption and the other one is on forest health. One, yes, health. The, um, one other initiative which we are leading, which is on the Vangari Mapai Award, that we periodically award extraordinary individuals for who has helped improve forests and the lives of people who depend on them by giving them the Vangari Mathai Forest Champions Award. Vangari Mathai, for those who may not know her, uh, was the first female African Nobel Prize, Prize uh, winner. And she um, started the Green Belt Movement in Kenya, fought very hard to get the Karura Park or Forest uh, close to Nairobi uh, gazetted and make sure that it was protected and help establish a number of small scale nurseries and tree plantings in the country, particularly by women. And we celebrate her through this award. Next slide, please. We also have the Forest Finance Facilitation Network. Um, and the initiative is then, of course, uh, supporting that network by trying to help mobilize financing for sustainable forest management and to assist countries in developing and designing national forest financing strategies. They've developed what they call a clearinghouse mechanism and a database on financing flows to forestry is underway. We have a small typo here, but there we go. Next slide, please. Then we have three joint initiatives that are in the pipeline. Uh, the first one is led by FAO with support of UNEP and UNDP. It's called Turning the Tide on Deforestation. As some of you may remember, we had an international conference on halting deforestation and working across sectors in 2018 that was organized by the Collaborative Partnership on Forests. We want to follow up on that. And at the same time, the UN Secretary General has tasked FAO and UNEP with establishing a working group that can come up with some more systematic support from the UN system to turning the tide on deforestation. So we want to establish a new joint initiative under the CPF on that. And actually next week, we would be taking a first step by launching a joint statement, which is on all of the evidence uh, and the facts related to deforestation, some of the key messages on what needs to be done. So that's coming next week as well. There is also a pipeline uh, initiative on pathways for designing a mechanism to incentivize deforestation, free landscape and value change for green growth. Very, very long title. I will never be able to remember um, off the top of my head. Uh, clearly very closely related to the other one, but focusing on a specific topic, which is um, looking at these, how we can create some incentives to help reduce uh, deforestation and at the same time, green growth. 
And lastly, uh, we have colleagues, uh, Andrew and others that are working on forest education funded by Germany at the moment um, with a conference coming up uh, in June. And there is a hope that that might also then turn into a joint initiative with a number of other uh, CPF members who are already very much involved in that. So that's sort of the joint initiatives that we have. We have for each of these developed a work plan for the next couple of years. Uh, as I said, we will be presenting it to uh, the UNFF next week. Uh, and obviously a lot of the work is already ongoing and it's a living document. So there will be some possibilities of obviously changing it as we move along. But that's how we operate on those uh, joint initiatives. And Tony, I think you can stop sharing the screen on this one, unless the next uh, presentation is linked directly. But maybe I want to just open up to ask if there are any questions and comments before we went, go to the next stage, which is a presentation a bit on what's actually going to happen next week at the UNFF. I can see that Nora has a hand up. So Nora. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. First, I would like really to thank you very, very much for this, uh, you know, presentation and this session. That's really very important. So I really would like to, to thank you for that. Uh, you know, to have this uh, information for everybody for the for the network. That's wonderful. Uh, and there is a lot already ongoing, and uh, so that's great. Uh, I wanted just maybe to check like a comment, but uh, mainly to see how we can uh, strengthen, you know, the contributions and the, and the work within of these partners using the CPF in the regions, you know, in the country, in the countries or in the regions. For example, uh, just giving one example. We had, you know, a great work together with the, uh, Andrew on the forest education, no, uh, involving mm -hmm. different regions in consultations, etc. So, how can we make it not as an ad hoc, but for example, how can we make it as a more, uh, you know, systematic, uh, as well as maybe integrate uh, some inputs, maybe in the work plans that are shared. I know you cannot open for everything, but I think maybe these work plans can be maybe shared before. So that we can also identify any priority regions, or you know. So this is just my, my my only comment, hoping you know to get more also contributions uh, from the field. Thank you very much. Great idea. We have developed sort of two versions of the the work plan. There is one longer one. They're both available uh, for the UNFF uh, and will be hopefully just endorsed next week. But we can also share them. Uh, one is a little bit more, I would say, internal. It has a lot of details of also on what's available in terms of funding and budget, and in most cases, not a lot. Uh, but we also have a short version that's a little bit more the one that we want to use with our partners and going forward and showing what we are doing. So we'll make sure that we, we send a link around to both of those so you can have a look at, at them and see where you can then uh, contribute. I think... They, the longer version at least has the names of the focal points. And if that's missing, then just make get in touch with me or Margo and we can certainly direct you to the right person for those where that may not be clear. Uh, we have a question in the uh, Q&A as well. Who can be part of the communicators network? I don't know if Maria is on the call, in which case she can perhaps answer that, if not Margo. It's not on the call, but thanks for this question, uh, Maria, the other Maria. Uh, yeah, definitely, um, Maria uh, de Cristofaro is a key person as she uh, basically serves as a secretariat uh, to, um, uh, to uh, some of the networks uh, jointly with uh, Mita Sen from the UNFF secretariat. So definitely um, um, FIO team through Maria de Cristofaro can contribute to it. And uh, maybe um, this question actually triggered my thinking. Maybe we could have at some point a specific session related to communication and communication networks. So that's maybe something perhaps what we can think about for the future. I think that's a great idea. All right. Any other questions for now? I don't see any hands, but 
If you can't get up your hand or open your mic, then send a question in Q&A and we can support you that way and make sure that you get into speech. While you sort of think over my, what you might want to ask about or comment on, maybe, Marco, we can give a presentation on what's happening next week. Thank you, Mette. And uh, yes, uh, good afternoon, colleagues. So good morning to some of you. I can see some colleagues uh, from Latin America connected. Welcome, everybody. Uh, Tony, could you please put on the screen uh, the second presentation? Thank you. So I want to just um, uh, present a couple of slides and tell you a little bit on what's happening next week uh, in the virtual session, 16th session of the United Nations Forum on Forest. Um, and the next slide, please. I will start with a couple of words on the history of the UNFF and, and, and what it is so that you are familiar. I can also see some new um, uh, names on the list uh, that are connected you know, to this meeting. So maybe this will be also useful for you. So first of all, I'll start by saying that UNFF was established in 2002 by the ECOSOC resolution as an international arrangement on forest, including the UNFF as part of it, as a subsidiary um, uh, body of ECOSOC. It was, um, uh, it was a decision that followed a, a five-year period of forest policy dialogue and negotiations through the Intergovernmental Panel on Forest and something so-called Intergovernmental Forum on Forest, which then ended up as UNFF. Next slide, please. Yes, how it operates, just very briefly. Um, the sessions are held annually, normally in UN headquarters in New York. This upcoming session next week will be, of course, virtual as we all meet now virtually due to the pandemics. The sessions are serviced by the UNFF Secretariat, which was created in 2001 and located in UN um, HQ in New York. Um, you've heard a lot uh, in Meta's presentation about a collaborative partnership on forest. I won't go much into this, but I want to mention that the CPF was established also by the ECOSOC resolution in 2000. And the core functions of the CPF were negotiated, discussed with countries in, a, in an open consultation, and then agreed um, in the resolution of ECOSOC in 2015. The important part to remember is that FIO is a permanent chair of the CPF. So it gives us a very nice, but also privileged position. Next slide, please. Yes, a few words about the principal functions of the UNFF. So in principle, UNFF was set to facilitate the implementation of forest-related agreements and foster a common understanding on sustainable forest management. Um, it was a forum to provide the continued policy development and policy dialogue, enhanced policy programs coordination, to foster international cooperation uh, on monitoring, reporting, and assessment, um, and also to strengthen political commitments to the management, conservation, and sustainable development of all types of forests. Um, there is a long history and there's a lot you can find online and also on UNFF um, website um, that talks about different key achievements of each of each and every session of UNFF. I just want to highlight a few sort of turning points. At UNFF 5, uh, it was agreed at referendum for the first time ever to establish four global forest goals, which were sort of a background and the basis to the current six global forest goals, and I'll come back to this. At UNFF 7 in April 2007, um, UNFF uh, member states adopted so-called non-legally binding instrument and the multi-year program of work for the period 2007 and 2015. Uh, in 2011 at UNFF 9, uh, the forum agreed to launch the International Year of Forest, and that's quite important because, as you know, FIO is always very involved in organizing the celebration of International Year of Forest. And also, as a CPF uh, chair, um, uh, we will be announcing the themes of the International Year of Forest for the upcoming 2022 and 2023. Um, and then, last but not least, on the special session of UNFF in 2017, the session adopted United Nations Strategic Plan for Forest from 2017 to 2030 and the six global um, forest goals and the 26 associated targets. Next slide, please. So what are these goals? I think it's quite important to really, um, to really highlight them. I mean, they are obviously aligned with the SDGs. And uh, they really tackle, you know, the key challenge, current challenges of forest and forestry globally. 
Goal number one is to reverse the loss of forest cover worldwide and increase efforts to prevent forest degradation and also to contribute the global efforts to addressing climate change. Global two is focused on enhancing forest-based economics, social and environmental benefits. Global, number, uh, global goal number three is really about increasing protected areas and also um, the areas of forest that are sustainably managed. And it also focuses on forest products from sustainably managed forest. Goal number four, it's really focused on financial resources and investments, and it aims at mobilizing significantly increased new and additional financial resources. Those of you who were involved in various UNFF sessions previously probably know and remember quite uh, many different heated, but also difficult discussions about um, forest fund and overall um, uh, investments in forest and forestry um, uh, worldwide. Uh, goal number five, uh, is to promote governance frameworks and enhance the contribution of forests to the 2020, 2030 agenda. And last but not least, goal number six, it's really to strengthen collaboration, coordination, coherence, and synergies, including with the UN system and across CPF members, organization, and stakeholders worldwide. Next slide, please. So what's going to happen next week? So next week, uh, the forum will host will hold its uh, 16th session. It's going to be um, virtual uh, altogether. The session next week is technical and thematically linked to the next following following session in uh, 2022, which will be a political with high level um, uh, forum and political discussions. Uh, the session is planned and organized as interactive exchange of experiences and lessons learned. So almost every day there will be various panel discussions. Um, the priority, thematic priorities were consulted with member states, with the CPF, regional and sub-regional organization and groups, as well as with major groups. So what you see on the agenda, it's pretty much an, a result of a very inclusive consultative process. The output of the session will be in the form of chair summary um, at the end of the week, um, adopted as in the form of a resolution. And this um, maybe one just point about the key outcome expected from the next week's deliberation is really to adopt a program of work for the forum for the period 2022-2024. And as Meta said earlier, um, in her capacity as a chair of the CPF, she will be presenting CPF work plan also for the same period of time, which is aligned, obviously, with the work program of the UNFF. Uh, next slide, please. Now, how FIO will contribute to um, the discussions next week? Um, I would like to say that we will almost have a massive contribution. First of all, our director general will participate in the opening segment, uh, um, which is focused on emerging issues, the impact of COVID-19 on forest and forest sector. Um, he will um, uh, send his video message uh, and will be there, um, uh, among others, um, distinguished um, high-level uh, speakers. Um, you can see all the sessions, including high-level opening segment, at the um, um, at the webcast, the UN UN TV, uh, everything will be webcasted live. Uh, so I encourage you to log in to the UNFF webcast uh, um, uh, link and um, and see this. Also on Monday, the um, the there will be a launch of a flagship publication on the Global Forest Goals Report 2021. Um, our Deputy Director General Maria Helena Semedo will participate in the opening session for this item after which there will be panel help where Meta will participate as one of the key panelists. Um, throughout the week, uh, there will be a number of plenary sessions at which FAO will contribute on numerous occasions. Um, two highlights I'd like to also add will be on Wednesday afternoon where um, we'll be presenting the global car set of forest related indicators. Evald will have a presentation and the results of the FRA 2020, where Tina will have also a presentation. And as I said, you can see it all live. Next slide, please. Last but not least, we will also be engaged in various side events. So first of all, on Monday, 
there will be a side event dedicated to uh, promoting, you know, our upcoming World Forestry Congress hosted by the uh, uh, FAO's uh, Secretariat of the World Forestry Congress and Korea Forest Service. Um, it's a little late for our own based colleagues, but maybe for some other regions, it will be just a great time. So uh, you can all um, connect to this side event and I encourage you to register in time. Um, in parallel, UFRO will host the side event at which they will launch the Global Assessment Report, Forest Trees and Eradication of Poverty where Mette will be providing her uh, closing remarks. Next slide. Then on Tuesday evening, uh, one of our key events really uh, on behalf of the CPF with a very strong involvement on, of FIO and many colleagues uh, from Forestry Division, we will be launching a joint statement on challenges and opportunities in turning the tide on deforestation. Um, we'll have a fantastic line of speakers, including a video message from the UK Minister, Lord Zach Goldsmith, um, with um, Meta presenting the, the, the joint statement, colleagues from UNEP, IUCN, Jeff Secretariat, country representatives from Ghana, hopefully Colombia, as well as Germany will join the panel. Next slide, please. Then we will have a number of other events uh, organized by other um, uh, partner, either countries or organizations, also with the contribution of our um, staff. And uh, um, you can see on Wednesday, um, there will be a, a, an event organized by Finland. Tina will speak at this event and also an event in parallel, unfortunately, organized by uh, AFOCO and National Institute of Forest Science in Korea, talking about, um, talking about um, uh, reporting and indicators where ANSI will contribute. Next slide. And finally, on Thursday evening, um, the Restoration Factory, uh, the event promoting UN Decade on Restoration, co-organized by our restoration team, and a um, um, fantastic event with a great line of speakers. Again, I encourage everyone to participate. I think this is my last slide. Thank you very much. And over to you, Mette. Thank you, Margo. Uh, Tony, I think you can stop sharing. Thank you. Uh, just to see whether there are any questions, comments on what's happening next week. We. If if we haven't already done so, Marco, we would send round the link to the webcast so that everybody knows how to access that because there are only one or two from each organization that can access through sort of the delegates one. But everybody else can, as Margo was saying, follow it live uh, and we'll send round that link as well. Um, maybe we've done that already. We haven't yet. So exactly on the plenary sessions, you can follow them all um, through the webcast. We will circulate the link. For the side events, you have to register. Those will be on a different platform, Zoom platform, and you need to register to each and every event. We've been tweeting about all the events. You can find them on Twitter and we will be circulating the links so that all uh, division will be aware. Thank you. Great. And also the, you can find the sort of the whole program for the event as well on the UNFF website, clearly with all of the different uh, sessions at plenary and all of the side events there also by many other organizations, some of which uh, may be of interest to you as well. Because it's taking place in New York, the, the timing is in the afternoon and evening Rome time. Uh, so it suits better, of course, for Latin Americans and not so well for those in Asia Pacific. Sorry about that, but I'm sure some of them will be recorded anyway and it would be possible to see them later should you so wish. I wanted to see if there were anybody who had any questions, any comments to either the way that the UNFF works, but also to the session next week or through the Collaborative Partnership on Forests. No, I don't see any requests for the floor. If anybody has anything just and you can't, as I said, raise your hands, put something in the Q&A, we can get in touch with you. If not, I would just say thank you very much for listening in. I hope this was useful to you. Uh, let me just put my 
video on again since now it will be okay if I'm getting kicked off. Uh, so just say thanks for joining us this afternoon. Uh, have a wonderful weekend. I hope that many of you will listen in next week and be more engaged with some of the joint initiatives that we have with Collaborative Partnership on Forest. So thanks very much for listening and have a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.